Welcome in to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered, brought to you by Drone Launch Academy. I'm your host, Chris Breedlove. Today's question is this, what are the recommended or suggested computer specs, PC specs, for processing mapping data, particularly maybe 3D data, intensive photogrammetry, point clouds, lighter point clouds, those sorts of things. So this is going to be a pretty simple question, or at least I'm going to take a simple approach to the question by first saying, no one's going to want to hear this. It depends, right? And when I say it depends, I mean, if you're going to work with PIX40 Matic or PIX40 Survey, both DJI Terra, Trimble Business Center, ArcGIS Drone to Map, like whatever your photogrammetry and or point cloud processing tools are, maybe a combination of several, they all have their own suggested PC specs. Usually there's a minimum spec like, hey, you at least have to have so much RAM, you at least have to have a graphics card of, of a certain oomph, you know, that kind of thing. But there are some generalities. So what I'm going to try to do in this quick solo episode is kind of highlight the generalities that are pretty ubiquitous, pretty shared across most softwares in this space. But at the end of the day, if you already have a certain software or you're trialing a certain software and you find, hey, I really like using this particular software, great. If you're trying to build a workstation, or order a new computer, whatever the case may be, definitely look at the manual for that particular software. So that being said, and I'll also talk about cloud options as well at the tail end. So again, these are generalities. Someone could definitely find an exception. You can run some of these programs on MacBooks. You can run certain things, you know, if you're in a more enterprise situation, um, you'll have IT, of course, involved. But generally speaking, processing locally certainly helps. Certain softwares really lean into that and say, hey, you've really just don't try to process this off some server somewhere, get that data locally for your active processing. You know, graphics cards are huge, right? Point clouds in particular, some photogrammetry processing, especially if you're not producing a point cloud as part of that process, you can get away with maybe a weaker graphics card. But if it's 3D at all, certainly LiDAR 100% and oftentimes even larger photogrammetric data sets that produce point clouds, you need a pretty high-end graphics card. That does not always mean an NVIDIA graphics card, but sometimes it does. DJI Terra, I've got some stuff on my other screen here I'm going to glance at from time to time. But DJI Terra in particular, if you're going to do, say, L1 or L2 reconstructions in Terra, you've got to have not just any NVIDIA graphics card, but a certain level of NVIDIA graphics card. So again, not always NVIDIA. It's not always the answer. It's not 100% mandatory, but sometimes it is. And it certainly is, is pretty ubiquitously endorsed or recommended by a lot of these softwares. In addition to that, RAM is a huge one. So, and by the way, again, it all depends on the software we're talking about, but a lot of the softwares in this mapping space, even beyond, you know, drone related, you know, photogrammetric or point cloud process, and even just other geospatial software, different tools that you run are, some are more RAM intensive, some are more graphics card intensive, so on and so forth. So it really is the combination, of course, that we're answering this question. It's a great question. It's a common question, but the point is, you know, don't get the latest and greatest NVIDIA graphics card, which I'm not even sure what that is today, you know, whatever the latest that just got announced or something and pair that with like eight, eight gigabytes RAM. That's just, you're missing the mark. You're going to, you're going to not be happy with yourself. You overpaid now for a really great graphics card with insufficient RAM. So to kind of draw all this together and give maybe some just minimum suggestions that are pretty ubiquitous across most software. And I'm, I'm thinking about actually, we'll put some links in the show notes just to a few examples. I'm not particularly endorsing, but ones that are out there that are common that I, I do like. But at the PIX40 ecosystem, looking at PIX40 survey, specifically DJI Terra, um, LP360 from GeoQ, which is a LiDAR processing tool. And if you kind of draw the commonalities across those three or four different examples, and I dare say that would apply to Trimble Business Center and Metashape and so on and so forth, I would say 32 gigabytes of RAM, at least. A newer processor, you know, Intel i7, i9 doesn't have to be Intel. That's not typically a limitation, but certain softwares are sensitive to processors. So pay attention to that when you look at your particular software. And then from a graphics card perspective, a newer, I say more bandwidth, but a graphics card that is, you know, relatively recent, often an NVIDIA release. And that's really one I would just say, hey, look at the manual for that particular software. So again, sufficient RAM. 30 gigabytes or higher, pretty decent, relatively recent graphics card, possibly NVIDIA, not necessarily having to be NVIDIA, newer processor. And then talk about Windows versus Mac, or I guess even Linux. Most, not all of these programs are going to be Windows, Windows first, at least. Uh, even I'm looking at PIX40 right now, PIX40 survey specifically, there are different you know, programs, might vary slightly, but you can technically run on a Mac OS. 
However, that's like at a minimum, like you definitely do it, but you're gonna run into some issues. So if at all possible, get a Windows machine, newer processor, newer graphics card, possibly NVIDIA, likely NVIDIA, maybe 30 gigabytes of RAM at least. If you're like, hey, I want a really, really good machine, I would shoot for 64, even 128 gigabytes of RAM. I think 256 is a little bit overkill in almost all cases. If you're generating massive LiDAR data sets, more from like a mobile scanning or just very, very large area mapping, there's just a couple of softwares that I'm aware of that actually would even deign to, I mean, it's not going to hurt anything, but you're probably just overpaying in most cases, very few exceptions. Another thing to point out, you know, I run most of my stuff, I run a laptop right now. I've processed miles worth of mobile LiDAR and hundreds, maybe not a thousand actually myself on this laptop, but not, well, photogrammetry I have, not, not LiDAR, but the point is you may consider getting a desktop uh, and certainly from a cost perspective, you can build your own, right? Assemble the components yourself uh, and probably save a good bit of money. So something to be said for that. And I'll confess, you know, on this podcast, I am not a computer guru. I just care about, Hey, does this work? Does this meet what I need? But someone else could better answer than me the technical reason why, but get the same kind of top line specs in a laptop versus a desktop. You're going to have better performance in desktop. I guess part of this because you don't have to miniaturize the components or whatever the case may be, certainly save yourself some money. So those are my main takeaways. Again, graphics card, sufficient graphics card, sufficient Ram, newer processor, help yourself and get a windows machine. If you've already got other machines, try virtual environments. You can do some different things. Some things are supported by Macs. So that's fine but make it easier on yourself. And the last thing I would say is cloud processing is always an option, right? So obviously there's costs that go into that and depending on where you are in your mapping journey, it may not make sense to go get you an M3E or now an M4E if you can get your hands on one. Not to make comments about tariffs and all kinds of other shenanigans, but you know, if you can get one, maybe it's not the time to make a massive cloud investment. But one of the really nice things, a lot of other benefits and, and pros to using a cloud processing solution which could include Pix40 Cloud or Propeller, Drone Deploy, whatever. You don't need to have the compute yourself, right? You could have a relatively inexpensive laptop that can get on the internet, have a, hopefully a better, you know, fiber, pretty sufficient, pretty decent internet connection, upload your whole folder of images, bring in your ground control points and so on and so forth, and set parameters, let, let the cloud obviously carry that, that bandwidth, not, not your local computer. So that's always an option typically a more expensive option unless you were just running through projects, maybe at scale, and then it might make more sense. Anyway, I'm gonna put a pin in that there. Hope that's helpful. This question I think actually came up in one of the uh, Drone Watch Academy advanced drone mapping and modeling kind of live announcement sessions. And it's a great question. So ultimately, you know, spec chasing, I think is something that happens a lot in our industry, both with the drones themselves, not really software programs. So I guess it could be certainly, I mean, hardware of all kinds, right? The GNSS you use in the field, the drone, the camera, LiDAR sensor, and the computer. So don't get caught spec sheet chasing or anything like that, but do check out the best thing I could say, like I said before, I've said before in other episodes, find a good trusted partner, use your network in the industry or if you're brand new to this resources that's why we're here as well but just figure out what's going to be sufficient to get started don't cheap out on yourself and, and make life harder i mean you could buy a, a lesser or minimum spec computer and it'll take you 12 hours to run a relatively small site into north though so versus a decent not not the best computer most expensive computer in the world but a decent computer might do the same job and two hours right so there's balance and everything right you get what you pay for and those sorts of things as well but anyway Hope this was helpful. As always, if you have a question you want us to tackle on this show, please visit ydqa.io, drop in the Drone Launch Connect community, or email me at chris at Until next time, have a great week.